Last week, Google Ads announced that video action campaigns are going away. Well, they're not really going away. They're being transitioned into demand gen campaigns. So in this video, we will show you the timeline of this transition, and then we'll go through the differences between video action campaigns and demand gen campaigns so you can prep your accounts for the change. The first thing I wanna talk about is the transition period, essentially knowing when video action campaigns are really going to go away. And we have some time, but as we know in this industry, time goes by quick and the change will happen sooner than we realize. So as of right now, you can start creating video campaigns using the demand gen campaign type. And of course, in this video, we will run through a demand gen video ad setup. But in the image that you're looking on the screen right now, let's jump ahead to March 2025. Because starting in March, you will no longer be able to create new video action campaigns in Google Ads. And if we look at the next three months, because it'll be a rollout, not everything's going to happen in April, but Google's telling us in April, May, and June, any video action campaigns that are still running will be automatically upgraded to a demand gen campaign type. Now next we are gonna walk through the differences between a video action campaign and a demand gen campaign. And there are clear differences. What we don't know yet is how the auto upgrade is going to work. So the recommendation, and one I totally agree with, is to start testing your current video action campaigns right now, as soon as possible, so you can start learning to see how they perform compared to your current video action campaigns. And you can start doing that now. Clearly we're gonna walk through a setup. And by doing it now, that is going to be manually building a demand gen campaign yourself. And Google did state that starting this month, and unfortunately I don't see it in my account yet, the copy paste feature will be eligible for video action campaigns. A similar tool within Google Ads where you can check the box next to the campaign, go to edit, click copy, and then in the more section, you can paste the campaign. Well, in the paste feature, Google says there will be an option that you can paste the video action campaigns to a demand gen format. Just to clarify, you'll only be able to do this if it's a video action campaign, not all video campaigns. And here we go, one of the first differences. Once you do paste your video action campaign to demand gen, Google says there'll be a place where you can add your logo and business name, because those are demand gen features that video action campaigns do not have. So going back to right now, September 2024, Google says the copy and paste tool should be available to all advertisers by the end of this month. Google also announced that there's gonna be a second tool called the migration tool, and this will happen in early next year, and the difference between the migration tool and the copy and paste tool is that the migration tool will still contain all of your previous existing video action campaign history. So you'll have to wait longer to test it out, but the ramp up time to testing it out will be quicker because you'll have all that historical information. You're not starting from scratch. So whichever way you start transitioning to demand gen, any of your older video action campaigns, once they're paused in 2025, will still show up so you can review any historical data. It just may not be included in your current new demand gen video campaigns. Okay, now we're gonna go into Google Ads and I'm gonna hop between a few different tabs so we can look at the differences between current video action campaigns and what features will be available or not available in demand gen campaigns. So currently, a video action campaign is available if you choose an objective for sales, leads, and website traffic. Once you click this option, you can choose your goals. I'm gonna go down, of course, we need video, and then I'm just gonna click continue to go to the settings, because here's where we're gonna to start to see some of the differences. Hopping over to a demand gen draft that we're creating, here we see campaign goals are limited, but they mirror the video action campaign objectives pretty well. Sales, there's conversion value, which we don't have any feeds hooked up with our Pay Media Pros demo account, so we're not gonna be able to walk through that. And then there's clicks for traffic, and then conversions for leads and website-based conversions. So the names and the descriptions are a little bit different, but the campaign goals themselves are pretty much the same. Now here's one of the differences. With a video action campaign, your locations and your languages are set at the campaign level. Looking at our demand gen setup, they want location and language to be at the ad group level. They still give you the option with this toggle, something that they don't really recommend. But as you can see, when we start creating a new ad group, setting the location and language can help you combine a variety of targets within the same campaign, similar to like we can do on Facebook. This might make segmentation easier in your setup. Now, if you're already thinking about all the migration tools and how you could potentially take multiple video action campaigns and combine them into one, I don't think you can do that. So you may just need to combine one and then create new ad groups. That's a good question to ask. Let's talk about another difference, and that's gonna be bid strategy. With video action campaigns, our only bid strategies were target CPA, maximize conversions, 
And if you chose the sale objectives, you had additional options for maximize conversion value or target ROAS. If we go to demand gen here, I went ahead, started to create an ad group. There's location and language within the ad group. I don't see bidding options here. Well, maybe we need to go back to the campaign and you don't really see bid strategy options here. That's because they are contained within the campaign goal. You don't get to select an option. So you're looking at more of a maximize conversions bid strategy here. Maximize conversion value if you're choosing conversion value. And then this maximize clicks option is the difference because maximize clicks was not an option in video action campaigns. So a little bit difference in the bid strategies between the two. In terms of setting your budget, both video action campaigns and demand gen campaigns will have daily or campaign total options. No difference there, but another big difference is going to be the network. And this is a positive one in my opinion. I'd say it's one of the fairly recent changes to video action campaigns, but Google no longer allowed you to exclude video partners on the Google display network. You had to do it and really broaden where your ads are being placed. Well, for a demand gen campaign, still at the campaign level, I'm going to scroll down and we see Google video partners is in beta right now. It's still optional. So for demand gen, as of now, I fully expect this to change at some point. Your video demand gen campaigns will start without video partners. This is a move I like, and I hope this remains optional forever, but we all know how Google works. I have a feeling this will be mandatory at some point. Let's go back to video action campaigns. Next, we see certain assets and the assets for video action campaigns were different depending on which goal you selected sales. You could attach your shopping feed and run your YouTube shopping campaigns. There are site links here. If I chose the lead objective, I could add a lead form to my YouTube ads. Well, not all these are transferable to demand gen. I should have chose a different example because site links are available in both demand gen and video action campaigns. The other assets or ad extensions that are going to be transferable will be product feeds for the sales objectives. That means in the conversion value goal for demand gen, you can still attach a product feed call to action extensions. Those are still available, but those were set up at the ad level anyway. Now what's not available anymore are the lead form assets. Those will be going away once you transform to demand gen and any of the affiliate location assets. That's going to be more for the accounts out there with brick and mortar stores where they sell their products. Those are also going to be going away with the transition to demand gen. Let's look at additional settings. Devices are the same. You'll be able to go into your demand gen campaigns and unselect certain options. But what is different is frequency capping. The main frequency capping is not available in demand gen, but there is an alpha out there right now called video frequency groups. That alpha will be going over to demand gen. Scrolling down, we're looking at the ad group creation. With a video action campaign, you would usually just choose an audience. Here's the audiences that we already created for other videos. With demand gen, still doing this at the ad group level. Makes sense, right? Earlier with demand gen, they did have optimized targeting already selected, but I was messing with this earlier and already unchecked the box. No different than video action campaigns. I chose custom segment it automatically check the optimized targeting. Now let's start looking at ad creation. And here's where I think demand gen has the win. It's a lot easier to add your videos to an ad in demand gen versus this video action campaign. Let me show you what I mean. I'm already at the ad level and I already selected video ad. If you're manually creating this, it will default to single image ad. So after you name it, all that fun stuff, you can still search or paste the URL just like video action campaigns, but they have this ad feature. And it's going to pull it from your asset library. So you can still choose your mix of uh, vertical, horizontal, square videos. Keep in mind, you can only add up to five. Yes, I know. I know. Whatever. This is just a demo. We have long videos. And here we see another difference, even though it's still in beta. Choose where your video show. If I scroll back up, we see there's a new little drop down underneath each video asset. So if we look at the two videos on the bottom, they're horizontal. These would not look good on shorts. I can uncheck the box here, same thing for the other one and take them off shorts. So I can put the best creative where I think it's going to perform the best. Same thing with the top two. Maybe I think they'll only work good in shorts or maybe just in stream in shorts. You can customize it, test it out in this beta. This is a feature I think is very cool. We don't get this with video action campaigns. All right, scrolling down now you can add your logo. I already said this is a demand gen feature. And then like other demand gen campaigns, 
You can add up to five headlines, up to five long headlines, and up to five descriptions. Here we see the business name, which is a demand gen only feature, I already said that too. And we could add site links specifically at the ad level. Is your call to action text, which is not a new feature from video action campaigns. Finish the rest of your URL, go to review and publish the campaign. But in terms of placements, there is a little bit of a difference. If I go over to Gmail, which is a placement for demand gen, but video ads don't appear on Gmail. When we could create dedicated Gmail ads, we could add video to them. So maybe that's a feature that can come back. But for Discover, which is only available on mobile devices, video ads can now appear, which this is a new placement feature that you could not get with video action campaigns. It's a separate section off to the side of the search results where it shows previous interests and all of that. You may have seen it if you go on Google on your mobile device. So here's where I'd add a combination of horizontal and vertical video, knowing that it's mobile only. And then YouTube, when you look at the preview, don't get scared by this example saying it's in feed. It's not in feed only. I'm scrolling through other options. Here we go. Here's an example of skippable in-stream. So you do still get the in-stream format. That to me was one of the main benefits of a video action campaign. It's still there. And so yes, it's also available on TV devices. There's a recommended option, but we see in-stream ads are also available on TV. It's not a difference between the two, but it's always something I like to bring up with video ads, knowing that people consume video on TV a lot different than a desktop or a mobile device, where it's easier for them to go to your website and take action. So either look at creating separate TV-focused video campaigns or turning it off if you really want to push action. And the last thing I note that is a difference after you launch campaigns is that demand gen cannot be added to a shared budget where video action campaigns could. So I know in previous videos when you talked about seasonality, trying to potentially lump multiple campaign types together, if it is a very short seasonal event, we used to be able to put video action campaigns with those seasonal budgets. Over well, now we're trying to replicate that with demand gen, it's not an option. It needs its own separate budget. I don't see that being a big headache for most of you, but it could be for some. And that's the timeline and the big differences and similarities that we're seeing with this change. I'll say it again, one last time, if you are currently running video action campaigns, start building your demand gen version right now. Learn as quick as possible in 2024 so you're not scrambling in Q2 of 2025. As always, keep your eyes out on the Google blogs when they announce other features or maybe any changes to this transition. But if you have any other questions, let us know in the comments below and we'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.